Android's ability to track you, and the White House's reaction to artificial intelligence. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by Take Control Books, one of the very best sources of clear, concise information on not only Apple's various operating systems, but also key Apple and third-party utilities, and more. Visit TakeControlBooks.com and start your library today. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Our Mac Voices Live panel is back to talk about Apple's assertion that Android is one big tracking device, and boy, do they have opinions about that and about how the Internet reacted to that assertion. Then we take a look at how the White House is reacting to artificial intelligence. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. Throwing the next one into our chat, um, I'm still trying to kind of figure out why this is news. Um, But an internal doc reveals Apple called Android a massive tracking device in 2013. My my reaction is, who didn't call Android a massive device? tracking device in 2013 <laughs> I'm, I'm with you jim I, you know this this and this in this particular link is for my more but it was all over the web like this was some huge slanderous thing and i don't get it mark oh it's simple clickbait yep it's nothing new it's just clickbait you know, and it, it's a document that came out in the uh, the Google trial. So uh, it's being reported. You know, it's it's not new news. It's just uh, the news is that, you know, Apple had this presentation back in uh, what was it, 2013. And uh, this uh, the slide deck, you know, made it its way into uh, an evidentiary discovering in, uh, in the trial against Google. Here's what I find interesting about it. And and Mark's right. This isn't really news in that sense, because it's not like we all didn't already know. Um, But here's the interesting thing for me. Uh, My takeaway out of this is that Apple has an internal document dating back to 2013 using all of its competitors as examples of what not to do. Well, you know, actually, I can. See, I think I can see why, where this is a story, because here's ten years ago, Apple's, you know, got written documentation that Apple is saying this is what Google does. Uh, how many hundreds of billions of dollars has Apple taken from Google in that intervening decade? Oh, in spite of everything they knew. And that's in other words, a really good question. Yeah, exactly. In other words, Apple full well knew that, you know, this is, you know, where this money is, you know, for. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's like 20 billion a year, right? So that's close to $200 billion. So, you know, this eliminates any deniability that they didn't, you know, you know. I mean, I I think you can make an argument that Google's model is Apple's model. Well, yeah, you know, but the different point, you might argue that, well, Apple says, yes, if you don't like Google, you can switch to another browser and, you know, dump them. So uh, I I agree. I I think the the hurt, the thirst and hunger there for the Google, you know, you know, uh, ad dollars, you know, emplacement dollars, you know, is, is, is a big factor. Um, and I agree that, you know, they don't really, it, it's hard for them to present that, you know, well, they're not somehow getting paid off by, you know, a partner who is spying and invading other people's privacy. Um, it's just that I think, you know, they can probably hold contradictory thoughts in their head at the same time, which is, Oh, we offer people a choice, <laughs> yeah, so they can opt out of this. You know, but the default is right. You know, but they didn't. Google. They didn't take this internal doc and make it public, and and say, you know, here's some information that you can use to in, inform your choice consumer. They kept that to themselves. Well, true. I looked at that, and I looked at the bottom to see. I was trying to figure out why is this confidential, and the only thing I could 
ask answer to myself is none of that information was unknown. It's, you know, the only reason it's confidential is Apple, probably like every other corporation, any internal presentation they give, they stamp confidential at the bottom. It's probably it's probably an unremovable feature of you know, their PowerPoint, uh, sorry, their keynote uh, templates. So, um, but yeah, but coming back to it, it's sort of like, yes, Apple knows that, you know, Google is invasive, you know, as all get out. Um, why are they partnering with them? Uh, because they are the best search engine. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, well, they're the biggest they're, search engine. I, they're, they're the I, only I, search I'm, engine that will give them two hundred billion dollars. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I'm going to rabbit hole for a minute. Um, so, Google is the dominant search engine. It's the biggest search engine. Is it the best search engine anymore? I'm questioning that because Google has, over the past several years, aggressively um, uh, gamed, if you will, search results as a revenue generating tool. So when when you do a Google search and you're expecting to just have like the, this raw ranked list of uh, of results. That's not what you get anymore. There, there's a lot of money making those search results show up the way they do, and uh, and that's doing a disservice <clears throat> to users because people are expecting to have uh, the the data that they need, not the data that someone is paying to put in front of them. Okay, I think Corey, I'm out of a Corey now. Cory Doctorow um, invented the word for what you're saying, and shitification. Yes, yes. Uh, what is it? What's the word, Jim? And shitification. Okay. And yes, Google that, it. That, that's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make that up. It's Cory Doctorow made it up. Yeah, and yes, I'd forgotten about enshittification, and you're absolutely right. This is a textbook example of what Corey was talking about. Okay, so here, enshittification, also known as platform decay, is the pattern of decreasing quality of online platforms that act as two-sided markets. Enshittification can be seen as a form of rent-seeking, which definitely applies to uh, the folks in, uh, in Mountain View. Who, uh, Webb, I saw you had your, your flap down. Did you have a, no, no, Webb? I don't have anything to add. No, it's, uh, I'm, I'm looking up in shittification. So I was just saying that, that, you know, there goes your, uh, um, um, your adult content. Yeah, the clean tag. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I mean, if it's, I, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. If, if that's what, if that's I, I a, think you're, you, you maintain your, um, clean tag with this. Because yeah. it's it's its own unique word. It's not something that George Carlin listed as something we can't say in primetime TV. It, it has one <laughs> of those words in it, but I think it's not one of them. It's, well, so it's does footed it's, it's own but you know, <laughs> yeah, but. right. And it's it's and it's, it's not well, a hip term. It's not it, it, Urban Dictionary doesn't have an entry for it, so it's yeah. still uh, it's still probably a highbrow term. I, Let's hope we don't I've seen that. it used a lot. If you if you read Tector, you'll see it constantly. It's, yeah, it it gets used a lot. Uh, oh, here's another word that uh, that has stuff in it: cockle. That's yeah, an okay I think, word. Okay, I, I, I think the adult rating is out the window. I was going to say, let's not test this. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or as George Carlin says, you can always prick your finger, but not the Which reverse. Is, yeah. Just, God, I'm so well, it sorry, depends guys. on the company you keep. And I think we're, we're right back to where I, we were when I signed on to the I, to the feed. I think so <laughs> we have we have another week where Eric is giving us a, a face palm. It's like, oh my God, why am oh, I here? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to issue a warning here. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to please restrain themselves. I'm very serious about this. We try not to touch on politics 
here on Mac Voices, this one gets very, very dangerously close. Okay, so let's just go go gently. Um, but I'm I'm putting in three different articles into our into our private chat room, and then I'll throw each one individually into the public chat room. Um, but this has to these have to do with uh, the artificial intelligence concerns that are out there right now, and there are three different articles here. It's got them all. So um, the first one is the executive order issued by the White House um, over artificial intelligence. The second one has to do with, uh, let me find it again. Um, Kamala Harris is, I guess, been tapped to be either the spokesperson or leading the AI safety initiative. If I, if I read it right. Um, and the third one is sort of a fun little article from Wired that imagine if Joe Biden's AI executive orders were inspired by the Terminator. <clears throat> and that one is, that is a really, it's a fun read. It's an interesting read, but it really does bring home the fact that it seems to be there are two camps on AI right now. Either the one that is going to destroy us all like Skynet or the ones that are going to be like Lieutenant Commander Data on Star Trek and, and are going to help us. And going through the, the social media channels that I frequent, even on LinkedIn, I find that that seems to be a pretty good analysis, one side or the other. It, it, it doesn't seem like there's a lot in the middle that people are either enthusiastic about what it can do for us or – they're terrified of it that it's going to drop the bombs, launch the missiles, and take our jobs. And then the executive order out of the White House. Okay, you know, is that uh, again? If you if you read them, um, I think it was in the Wired article too that they were talking. And this might be a spoiler, folks. So if you haven't seen uh, Tom Cruise's um, Dead Reckoning movie Part One, um, just you want to probably skip the next little bit of this conversation. But that seems to have solidified it in Biden's mind that this is something very dangerous. So that's, I mean, that all goes into the blender here. And I'm curious to see if, if you all saw any of these articles or had a chance to look at them, because it just seems like there are a lot of mixed messages, even, even within the administration. Mark? I did. I saw. I think Eric uh, posted the uh, executive order last week and just a little bit before showtime and it was a full week, so we didn't get to discuss it. But, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've, I've read that and it makes uh, even more expansive use of the defense production act to try to empower the executive branch to compel private industry to do all sorts of things. Um, I would point out that you know, this this idea, this assertion that oh AI is terrible, it's really fearsome, the government needs to control it. It's not just AI. You know, this this administration is doing similar things, you know, with uh, you know uh, microbial and you know biological uh, research, you know, and asserting that oh these things could be really horrible, and we need government to come in and control it. So I want to make a couple of points. I think you know, number one. And I apologize if this sounds humorous, but it's really did serious because who really thinks the government has the skills to do any of this stuff? Regulate AI, regulate, you know, or as the Biden, you know, you know, EO executive order, you know, wants to get government involved in testing and validating and things, you know, who thinks the government has the skills to do any of that? You know? If they don't have the skills, why are they even trying to, you know, get involved? You know, they do similar things and, you know, asserting, oh, well, danger of biological research, you know, this, that, and the other thing, and the government needs to get involved. You know, so um, without making political, you know, there is, uh, I don't know, there, there was this guy, Jerry Purnell, used to have a column in Byte magazine way back when. Sure. So he used to be a kind of a you know, common guest on Leo Laporte's, uh, you know, This Week in Tech show. Um, you know, he's, he, has an, he has an interesting career as, you know, as a real hard ass, you know, uh, DOD uh, you know, guy, you know, 
rumored to have been involved in sort of, you know, uh, persuading Reagan, you know, to go after the SDI uh, strategic defense initiative, the Star Star Wars uh, defense. Um, but, you know, he has a thing that uh, he's called the uh, Pornell's War of Bureaucracy. And he says, you know, in bureaucracy, there are two types of people. You know, number one, you know, the people who believe in the mission of the bureaucracy and who pursue it and, uh, you know, go forth and do good things. And number the second type of person is, you know, the people who believe in the bureaucracy itself. And, you know, he says, you know, unfortunately, you know, over time, it's the second type. They took over the bureaucracy and it just becomes a self-sustaining, um, you know, they, they get in charge, you know, of who gets funded, who gets promoted, and what the bureaucracy does. So over time, it, you know, diverges from its original objective and just becomes a bureaucratic, you know, mess. And that's what this Biden executive order seems to me. It seems to me it's a bureaucratic power grab for stuff that they have no abs- no, no actual skills to do, except maybe Joe saw a movie and he got scared and, you know, he's thinking, oh, well, we need to do something about that. And, you know, there's a bunch of you know bureaucrats who know nothing, but oh, this is an opportunity to accrete accrete power and get involved and slow down progress in private industry. Jeff? Yeah. All right. So I, I I will stay clear of politics with this. Um the the closest I think I'm going to get to, to politics is is to say that Sure, right now, the government is not, uh, uh, to the best of our knowledge, is not in a position to to be able to dive through all the code and everything else to determine what's going on with, with various AI systems. That could change if you bring the right people on board. And you can look at other agencies that our government has had. Uh, and still has over the last century, where uh, that's exactly what has happened. So, um, I, I'm there. We go. Okay, so I'm out of that area. All right. My take on reading through the executive order is that first, this has no impact on the current uh, um, collection of AI and LLM tools that are on the market today. This will have an impact on much, much larger AI uh, systems that might be in development now or will be in development in the future. And when they're going to uh, to be used as part of a, uh, a government or military system. Now, in the case of using uh, tools like this, in those arenas, it makes sense to me that the government should have some involvement and would have an interest in how those are created, how they are protected, what fail safes are in place, and uh, and how they will perform. Because you you could potentially have a situation where you have someone making life and death uh, decisions. For large numbers of people, based on data that they're being provided through a system like this, so it makes sense that you would want to have some say in how they're being uh, created, and and uh, some level of understanding in how they're working, so you can feel confident, at least to a degree, that uh, that the data that you are getting, so that the decisions you are making are as good as they can possibly be. And that's the idea here. How will that be implemented? I don't know, because right now we're just looking at, uh, at, at the executive order. So Jeff, I would, I would comment on that, that yes, I think you know, maybe some of the objectives in terms of how some of these systems are used, I think that's a proper ground you know, for, for governmental action, you know, for, for legislation. You know, Putting the government, you know, involved in how things are developed and tests, you know, I just think, you know, they they don't have the skills to do that. And yes, maybe if they brought other people in, you know, that's going to be way more expensive and may way more time consuming than just you know, setting, you know, uh, you know, industry, you know, thou shalt not, you know, for instance, you know, 
attach self-learning AI systems to mission-critical systems on the internet. So, you know, there, I think there are ways that this can be regulated, but you know, trying to you know trying to get a slow-moving uh, you know uh, you know unskilled government involved as a development partner, I think that's just totally beyond what uh, government is actually able to do. Well, there was also a time when the government couldn't uh, uh, regulate, manage, or uh, monitor uh, pharmaceuticals. And you still think they do, or they're just taking a half, you know, a ham, broad, you know, broad uh, spectrum approach? You know, uh, I mean, right no. now. So actually, let me say that. Let me say that differently. Right now, um, they're not involved in testing and running clinical trials. They're involved in saying, okay, you know, pharmaceutical X Y Z company, you know, show us the data, show us that this thing is safe. You know, I think that's an appropriate rule of government. The Biden order doesn't do that. It wants to stick government involved as a development partner to actually get involved in development, testing, qualifying of these systems. And I think I think that's the line that you know government should not cross. All right. So am I misinterpreting the order? Because I thought that this was uh, limited specifically to to government uh, uh, AIs. So. Tools that are going to be used by the government and used by the military. No, this it's is broader not than about that. public. Uh, it's broader than private that's, industry that's, tools. That's a, no, that's that's the problem with the order. Is it's is, it's written in a very broad fashion. Yeah, that that was my impression too. Jeff, mm, okay, that it was that it was coming across very broad. Um, Eric, you're up. Um, a, a couple of things. One. It's written as guiding principles, not a, this is what we're going to do and you have to follow it because I don't think anyone knows how to write rules, restrictions anywhere else. Right now, people can't actually handle what is the definition of AI. AI means two completely different things. There's the kind of science fiction reference of you're basically an artificial human and can make decisions and choices and all that kind of stuff and all of the worry that comes with that from various movie scenarios. And there's the large language model. You get responses that feel more natural than kind of a default um, uh, uh, dictionary type response. Um, so I, that's going to continue to be a problem. I used to just say, well, people are defining it wrong. I think it's being used this way so much now that the definition has actually changed, but it's going to take a while to figure out how to use that change definition to actually make any sort of decisions, recommendations. Uh, but there's enough worry out there that I think you need something. And this is something. And there'll be commentary on it. People will go off and do commissions. None of this is going to be fast. I don't think we really have to worry about it a whole lot. But not thinking about it at all, I think, would be a problem. Um, the the piece I take out of all of this is that uh, there is a, a an importance in supporting the arts. There is a huge importance in supporting content creation because a, a lot of these systems take existing bits and pieces and then reassemble them in something similar it's not creating something brand new that hasn't been thought of before it's saying oh something existed and i want to build something in that style or something similar to it so it's even more important now to have content creators with original work than it has ever been in the past. It's more important to do the, the interviewing of, of parents and recording kind of experiences um, because once that's gone, when people go to ask, well, what happened, you'll get a, an assimilated group selected out of whatever did get recorded and and that's the response so some of the things some of the kind of cautionary bits to try to to work through are you know biases in the answers 
you know, it used to be that people would say, well, if you're trying to go through and work on a paper or a test or something, Google it, look to see what the answers are, write those down, maybe look something up in the library and flesh it out a little bit. And the response was always, well, that doesn't give you a good answer. Now you, you say, well, you know, put it in the chat GPT, explain what the assignment was and how many pages you need, and you get back pages and pages of something that sounds very convincing and may have no bearing on anything. It's, it's almost worse, but it's sort of that same effect. So again, I go back to the importance of content creators, the importance of going back through and looking at the content that's out there and perhaps parsing some of it or giving some opinions on some of it, um, having companies that have you know coding tools, for instance, do their own content, feeding their own systems to generate safe code, for instance, or uh, historians or or uh, going through and and writing systems that kind of go back and forth where there has been review of the content, trying to at least identify some of the biases that might come from the limited pool of knowledge and and then do additional research or or, or follow grants to produce more knowledge to kind of fill in some of the blanks. So I would you you covered quite a lot of grounds there. I would I would I think probably the two most important important topical areas you raised were you know number one and I and I think and I think I agree with you uh you know because you hinted at it but it is about you know copyright material and I think if things are you know covered under copyright yes you know we're going to need uh you know I think new laws you know governing how you know something like that can be used because you know it seems that you know a lot of chat GBT is becoming you know a sort of a natural language foundation for understanding and providing more natural you know interchange you know sort of side comment to a Jeff Gamet is I'm finding that I'm using if I need to do search more I use uh, I use Edge and I use Bing more than Google and I find I'm more pleased with the results and. You know, the Google implementation of, you know, sorry, you know, Microsoft implementation, I it's a chat now or whatever it is. I can't remember. You know, I like it better than chat GPT because it will give you, you know, a set of, in essence, footnotes for where it draws you know, the bulk of the information that it's using to formulate in an answer to your into your into your prompt. So I like that. You know, the 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 second Big point that you spent a lot of time on, Eric, is yes, understanding the limitations of these tools because by their by design they will give you an answer, whether it's true or useful or not or just garbage. You know that requires skill on on, on the user part. And as we said before, and there's just sort of an underpants song. I I had to you know interact with it like a dozen times before I got something that was anywhere near acceptable. And I think you know if somebody's just looking for a quick Give me a hundred word, you know, hundred hundred word, you know, essay on X Y Z. You know, it's you know, I I have no idea how accurate or how you know how or how errant it would be, but uh, but again, I think is is this something we really need executive orders about? I mean, once upon a time, we all had to learn how to you know search you know on Google, you know, so. I think some of that is just, you know, as a public becoming aware how to use the tools. And, um, you know, I don't think that, uh, you know, executive orders, you know, you know, trying to say, oh, you need to make this stuff more friendly or more, you know, more, um, uh, more prone, you know, more free from user, you know, user error. Um, you know, that, that sounds to me like pie in the sky. And I think, you know, a competitive market will do a much better job of that than, uh, you know, than, you know, any, uh, you know, executive branch uh, regulations. Webb, you've been really quiet tonight. And I'm, I'm really cu curious to hear your thinking on this because I, I see so many issues here as it relates to not just general usage, but also business and also some of the paranoia over 
that that AI is coming for our jobs. And I, I, I came I, this close to staying out of this. You realize that? So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now so, I, I know I'm um, in. I want you in. <laughs> and and uh, um, this is an issue that has taken up a lot of my bandwidth professionally. Um, uh, and, and there are a couple, couple of things, couple of statements that I'll make. First of all, as we look at uh, ChatGPT, we realize that there is no expectation of privacy what you put into it. If you put anything into it, it is public domain. Okay, and as, as a business that I have uh, uh, personally identifiable information on my policyholders, or I have uh, other corporate information. I had to put a policy in effect that says you cannot use uh, chat GPT, BART, you name it. Um, I had to put a policy in place that went to effect Friday that we had to lock it down and we can't use it. Um, and the the problem with having that iron fist approach is that you, you, I, I'm afraid I went too far. Um, and th this is not just me. This is where I got the lawyers involved and I got my my uh, investment people involved and I got my IT people involved and in trying to figure out what this is. Uh, it, it's like I said, the, the, no expectation of privacy. Got to be careful about corporate data. On the other hand, uh, I was playing around in Excel over the weekend and I needed to figure out how to use a function. And I asked chat GPT and it gave me a, a great explanation on, on how to utilize a function so it it has a benefit too um now what 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 um mark said is true though is that it it doesn't have any logic behind it it just spits out what was put into it um so so you, you have to have some um maturity if you will to make sure that uh uh what you're reading is has some basis of fact or, or truth um uh it, it it's a real um uh, big big issue um and uh, i i will tell you this um lawyers are going to be making a lot of money on this um and, and trying to get businesses to come through with this uh um and uh it, it's it's a it's a big deal uh, i i hate to to break it to you Jeff, but uh, uh, Colorado has invoked some new privacy laws that uh, are really going to put this whole general term AI thing on its ear. Um, there's mm -hmm. some some issues going on with uh, uh, you got to make sure there's no implied bias and, and all this other kind of stuff. And you want to get real political, we can get down that and i don't want to do that but it, it's it's a huge issue uh now what 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 we're doing is uh um like i said we locked it down on friday if someone has a, a pure business need uh we can open it up for them uh there's a process they have to go through to get that authorized and they have to understand that that they cannot put anything that's considered proprietary out there because if they do it's bad it could mm -hmm. be it could be career ending for for some people um so i i, I here again it, it's i don't want to overslide the base on this one um i'm trying to figure out how, how how to come up with this this happy medium between i got to protect the the assets that i have at the same time it does help make people in some situations more effective in what they do so i'm getting off my soapbox but but that's kind of the the world that i've been living in for the last five days so this mac voices live panel is back one more time to finish up our debate over chat gpt and whether or not it exposes information that's next time on mac voices i'm chuck joiner and i will see you then as always thanks for watching visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with chuck on social media get involved in our facebook group or like our facebook page and get more out of your apple tech with mac voices magazine free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices each month.
Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.